Y'all better get a chair for this one, because it looks like aside from the freak-offs that Diddy was having with these women, he was actually having G-relationships too with a lot of men, and even flying them out of the country to blow their backs out on. Aya, we already knew about the freak-offs he was having with men, but nobody actually thought he was in serious relationships with them, and sending them out of the country for vacations. This came after Freddie P decided to spill the tea about Diddy Seeker relationship with his ex-assistant Fonsworth, claiming that Diddy turned Fonsworth out. Apparently, Fonsworth ended up running away from Diddy and had never spoken about Diddy until he recently got arrested. The worst part is their allegations going around that Fonsworth wasn't the only one who got turned out because allegedly Diddy did. The same thing to YK and Meek Mill. Okay, so is most of y'all. Already know by now Diddy has been getting exposed recently for his infamous freak-off party, and even turning a bunch of men out in the industry to make them indulge in things that they really don't want to do. In fact, Freddie P recently sat down with the art of dialogue to spill the tea about Diddy's alleged boyfriend, and according to him, word got out that Diddy and Fonsworth Bentley were in a relationship. Freddie P said he saw Diddy disrespecting the hell out of Fonsworth a lot of times and at the time, he didn't understand why. Bonsworth was allowing that kind of disrespect, until he later found out that Diddy was laying that pipe in him on the low. According to Freddie, Diddy doesn't have love for anybody, and that everyone who hangs around Diddy is either somebody he's sleeping with, or someone he has dirt. Uh, See, of course, I think he gay. I think everybody around him gay, and I think you don't get to stay up around him unless you've proven that either you are with the sh or the sh don't bother you. You are you either took part in some foolery, um, aided some foolery, enabled bad behavior, or have your own ghosts, have your own skeletons that he allowed to, you know, oh, I'll do this while you do that. We all good. We don't give a f This our world. Puffy, it's an addiction. Turning people out. That's what that was his an addict. That was his addiction. He didn't, we didn't, it's plenty of people that he could have. It was his addiction. Y'all don't understand. I look at Bentley and all these and all these people. Come on, man. Now that we know the monster, man, you carry the man on, bro. He was the man. I, I watched this man disrespect you every chance he got. Talk to you like his bitch. He talked to Harv like his bitch. He talked to D Dot like his bitch. He talked to all them niggas like they his bitches. And now that I learned that they really were his bitches, that's why I got so much respect for Gene. I think Fonzo was his little boyfriend, girlfriend at, a, at one time, because you have to see how they was conducting themselves. I don't want to say that about Benny, because Benny got kids and shit, and I, love, I, got, I, I got respect for that nigga. Like, he was one of the few niggas I f with. But the way they used to carry themselves back, and plus, on, and plus he had put something on his Instagram, he put something on his Instagram what, like four or five months ago and he was like, don't let me tell my story or some shit like that. I heard they fell out because of, um, he was stealing or something like that, whatever. But Nick, you hang around a nigga who don't want to pay you, giving millions of dollars away every night, you know, acting like he can't pay you on time, want to uh, feel your butt, all this weird ass shit. You going to steal from him too, Nick. You might not even be a thief. Now, even though Freddie P was talking a little crazy in that interview, people felt like he made some valid points. Because for years now, there have been speculations that did he turn Fonsworth out and blackmailed him into silence. Now, for those of y'all who don't know who Worth is, he's a rapper, but he's actually more known for being Diddy's assistant back in the early 2000s. Diddy initially hired him as a stylist because he was desperate and in need of somebody to help rebrand after that incident, the one that went down in the club between him, Jennifer Lopez, and Shine. But not too long after Fonsworth pretty much became the assistant, and they went everywhere together, Bonworth was Diddy plus one everywhere he went. And there were even rumors circulating that did Diddy was clapping Fonsworth cheeks. I mean, do y'all remember that infamous photo of Fonsworth holding an umbrella over Diddy at the beach? And some of y'all may not know this, but Diddy and his entourage, who actually gave him the name Fonsworth Bentley, apparently he was so close to everybody that they felt like they had to give him a name so that he could officially be part of their crew. So Tony DeNaro 
was like, yo, we got to think of a name for you, man. And if you're going to be his personal assistant and um, slash butler slash umbrella carrier, whatever you going to do, you understand? We got to think of a name for you. We, we're going to try to make you like Bentley or either uh, uh, Fonsworth or either Bent. You got to be, you know, you got to have that kind of persona. You got to dress all the time, be neat and the whole nine yards. And then the dude, Derek was playing with him like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know how to do that. I could be over the top. You know, he was acting like that. You know what I'm saying? I could be over the top. So he was saying that. And uh, the dude, Tony De Niro, said, we got to figure out a name for you, man. It's got to be on the level of, you know, those characters. He said, you got you to be like Fonsworth. You got to be like Bentley. He said, we're just going to call you Fonsworth Bentley. And he said, I like it. Now, even though he was mostly just known for being a servant to Diddy, he actually had his own plans and decided to quit his job as Diddy's assistant to pursue music. In 2003, Fonsworth landed a spot on Diddy's MTV reality show, making the band but right after he wrapped the show, he actually quit and started taking his own career very seriously. He managed to secure a book deal and went on to author the New York Times best-selling adequate book, Advance Your Swagger, How to Use Manners, Confidence, and Style to Get Ahead. A few years later, he had his own show on MTV called From G's to Gin, and the show went on for two seasons before getting canceled in 2009. But he ain't let this stop his motion because two years later, he went into music, and that's when he was pretty successful at UCF. He released his debut album, Colors, and two years after that, he collaborated with Kanye West on his 2013 album. What's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Now, even though Freddie P was talking a little crazy in that interview, people felt like he made some valid points. Because for years now, there have been speculations that did he turn Fonsworth out and blackmailed him into silence. Now, for those of y'all who don't know who Worth is, he's a rapper, but he's actually more known for being Diddy's assistant back in the early 2000s. Diddy initially hired him as a stylist because he was desperate and in need of somebody to help rebrand after that incident, the one that went down in the club between him, Jennifer Lopez, and Shine. But not too long after Fonsworth pretty much became the assistant, and they went everywhere together. Bonworth was Diddy plus one everywhere he went. And there were even rumors circulating that did Diddy was clapping Fonsworth cheeks. I mean, do y'all remember that infamous photo of Fonsworth holding an umbrella over Diddy at the beach? And some of y'all may not know this, but Diddy and his entourage, who actually gave him the name Fonsworth Bentley, apparently he was so close to everybody that they felt like they had to give him a name so that he could officially be part of their crew. 